are now going to hear the second keynote, which will be given by uh, Dr. Wen Tong. Dr. Wen Tong is a CTO of Huawei Wireless and a Huawei, is a Huawei Fellow. He's the head of Huawei Wireless Research and the Huawei 5G chief scientist and has led Huawei's 10-year-long 5G wireless technologies research and development program. He is the industry recognized leader in invention of advanced wireless technologies. For the past three decades, he had pioneered fundamental technologies from 1G now to 6G wireless. He was elected as an IEEE fellow, and he was a recipient of IEEE Communications Society Industry Innovation Award and IEEE Communications Society Distinguished Industry Leader Award for pioneering technical contributions and leadership in the mobile communications industry. Uh, he's also a recipient of the RA Fessenden Medal. He joined Huawei in 2009, Pre and previously he was the Norton Fellow and Head of the Network Technology Labs at Nortel. And he joined the Wireless Technology Labs at Bell Northern Research in 1995 uh, in, in Canada. And now, Dr. Tong, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the title of my talk is On the Convergent Road to 6G. Uh, so I will talk about uh, the technical uh, challenges uh, for the next generation wireless, which is a 6G. And my opening uh, message is the convergent road uh, for 6G is lead to the global standardization and a unified standards. So after five years, uh, five, uh, many years or five years of uh, research across the industry, uh, we now have a common vision for 6G, that is uh, 6G is to create the connected intelligence. So the key 6G usage scenario will be consist of a three foundational capabilities, that is the immersive digital world, such as XR. So three days ago, uh, you see Apple's announcement of this uh, capable uh, device. And of course, the metaverse for the EMBB enhanced the type of application. The second is the extreme uh, communication. Uh, this is mainly for the industry uh, robots uh, or for URLC enhanced type of applications. And then there's a massive connectivity for machine type of communication, uh, mostly for the sensors and something uh, could be for the uh, uh, planted, uh, the brain planted chips, for example. So those are type of communication uh, for the future. However, uh, 6G is not a, just a simple upgrade for 5G. 6G wireless will go uh, beyond the communication and it is the, a foundational platform uh, start with the 6G to, uh, to shape uh, every aspect of our life and the work uh, in the new decades for the 2030 to 2050. And what six bring the new capabilities are two. One is a machine learning, uh, AI enabled. So to that end, it could lead uh, the deliver the service of uh, AGI, the artificial general intelligence, because the time frame is longer enough to, for, uh, for, for us to get into that stage. And second is the uh, uh, the auxiliary function that uh, uh, radio uh, propagation inherent is, uh, which is a sensing. Uh, that is very critical uh, to link the AI and the connectivity as a unified framework. Um, the, uh, in the ITU, which is an international telecommunication union uh, that we are at the moment, 
finalize the 6G framework, that is the so-called 6G vision. It is, in fact, the definition of a 6G uh, in this picture you have seen. Uh, as a continuous long march for, from 5G, 6G is not only a platform for connectivity between the physical world and the cyber world, 6G is also a platform for computing, a platform for sensing, a platform for uh, automation or uh, make uh, artificial intelligence for, uh, for everything, right? So uh, on, the, on the digital world side, 6G is a new universe of intelligent world. And then uh, the uh, 6G is in fact the continuum that is the, between the physical world and the digital world uh, that the bridge uh, we want uh, to create. Um, in the next few, uh, this, the, this one is uh, uh, in terms of what is 6G feasibilities and the 6G technology uh, uh, concept approved. There are a lot of activities and we did uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, lab uh, trials and the field trials uh, to prove all, all this uh, main, the technology for enabling the main, uh, the five main uh, scenarios, use case for, uh, for the fund to deliver the 6G. Uh, then uh, in, the, uh, in, in the end, uh, uh, like uh, in the next two years or so, uh, all the research activity, including where most of we're talking here, the European activity, the Chinese activity, the American activity, worldwide will lead to uh, the standardization, uh, a global standardization to, to 6G, which is uh, 3GPP based uh, standards. And uh, in that standardization, uh, uh, after uh, the effort of a standardization uh, time frame, uh, we, was, we, were, we were expecting uh, 6G will be in the market in the time frame of uh, 2030. So in next uh, couple of uh, charts, uh, we will present our like a blueprint on how to achieve this technology uh, goals. So the first pass to uh, achieve the one terabits per second of a data rate in terms of uh, 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 sector cell-wise is the uh, centimeter wave massive MIMO. Uh, so MIMO uh, technology will, in 6G time will continue to evolve as a main engine to deliver the throughput. Uh, because uh, in the centimeter wave, the smaller wavelengths, much of spectrum uh, is available. And then we are able to, uh, to, to further innovate uh, and the, uh, to, to enhance the engineering uh, capability uh, to, for example, more than thousands of uh, RF chains uh, getting to another domain of the MIMO uh, in the coming uh, 6G network. So in our view, the great innovation in 6G MIMO will be the UE massive MIMO, meaning at the 10 gigahertz to 13 gigahertz range, uh, the, the smaller wavelengths, and in the form factor of a smartphone, we can actually install 16, uh, 64 antennas or even more. So that is the uh, potential uh, we have, and this, mem this type of uh, uh, RF device could be very well integrated, embedded in the uh, display antenna uh, in the L, uh, LED uh, type of uh, 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 antenna in the front end integration. So this is a very new uh, uh, radio RF technology. And then uh, in that case, uh, the channel uh, uh, model and propagation property are very different from uh, uh, the sub three gigahertz uh, MIMO. Uh, again, before, because the uh, centimeter wave level with all the physical surroundings are, 
are in we are in a different propagation uh, regime. So antenna modeling, link budget uh, optimization, the blocking effect, and all this uh, could be revisit, uh, and there need some fundamental studies uh, on this aspect. Uh, then, uh, in addition to smartphone, there are many other devices, such as a car factory uh, robot uh, and hospital robot, and all this. Uh, you know, they, they will be make uh, the uh, coming six, MIMO uh, technology in 6G much rich, and uh, there are a lot of room to, uh, to explore. And then the second pass to uh, one terabits per second of data rate is millimeter wave beam forming. Uh, and then we're talking about many beams uh, beam forming in concurrent. So the millimeter wave frequency range we're talking about is a 26 gigahertz to 140 uh, gigahertz in the low end of uh, uh, sub terahertz. Uh, this is a basically is a line of sight uh, technology uh, for the uh, dense micro cell uh, type of a grid of a development. Uh, so in the integration of the uh, millimeter wave uh, in, uh, in the, especially the high end of a millimeter wave, uh, we are able to have, uh, can have a very uh, tight, uh, compact uh, architecture, antenna architecture, RF architecture, uh, based on 3D technologies with uh, many, for say, hundreds or four hundreds concur concursive beams uh, to mitigate a lot of uh, 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 beam uh, uh, management issues that were left over in the 5G uh, scenario, which uh, uh, actually impact the, uh, the user experience. Uh, so it will be more uh, easy to handle the uh, uh, mobility scenarios, uh, even uh, the uh, sensing as well as the, uh, the cell age performance. So in the case uh, of the uh, millimeter wave, one thing I want to add is uh, in the uh, 6G domain, uh, we need to have uh, mandatory UE with a dual polarization beams. That means there's no only, uh, at any time there will be two, uh, uh, two beams uh, 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 transmitting or receiving rather than uh, um, break before make type of uh, connectivity we have today uh, that cause the uh, millimeter wave performance in the 5G has a significant uh, degradation. Um, the, uh, the, as well, uh, for the millimeter wave, uh, the sensing become uh, uh, more important and then uh, with that millimeter wave, uh, with, uh, uh, the sensing will be uh, the key part to build all the digital uh, uh, environmental digital tooling for delivering the service and for uh, add on uh, uh, value of uh, in, in terms of uh, tailor the service to the precise uh, location in the, in, the, in the industry, for example, in the public space or in the factory or in the room. Uh, then the third pass to do uh, to go to the one uh, terabits per second uh, of the speed is the millimeter wave uh, with the uh, mega constellation low orbit satellite network. Uh, this is a uh, the new element in 6G of networking, and the, the massive beam uh, will be, uh, be possible in the current. Uh, state of our art of a satellite design. So for example, in this, uh, in this example, we have uh, uh, a pair of a 2D array panel, and each panel produce uh, the interleaf uh, beams, and those beams are digitally formed uh, with uh, uh, some uh, uh, shape, uh, in this case elliptical, very tight, compact beam, uh, a massive beam uh, in terms of uh, 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 transmission, and then uh, the 
the satellite consists of two antenna panels of uh, with uh, each with uh, uh, or four panels, each with uh, some 31 array modules as a modulized with a 16 centimeter by uh, four or five meter long that panel. Uh, and then the device side is very close to a smartphone, is about 10 centimeter to 10 centimeter pipe, uh, uh, iPad like device. So this is the communication right now, uh, the, the satellite uh, for uh, potential 6G implementation uh, right now we are designing. And the, uh, this morning for 4.30 uh, a.m. Uh, local time here, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the experimental satellite uh, is launched. So we will expect a very uh, good result from this. Uh, so far the test is about five uh, uh, b uh, bits per hertz uh, uh, in the frequency uh, spectrum density where very good throughput was enabled by this. So if we have a very good progress in this mega constellation and the realization of, uh, or the commercial realization of the millimeter wave may start from the satellite first and then terrestrial deployment will be followed uh, because uh, the first, uh, the coverage problem will be solved uh, and then the service can be launched and then terrestrial deployment is the capacity adding. Uh, uh, in this. So uh, the uh, data rate for what I mentioned uh, in the uh, one terabits per second 6G network paradigm, uh, the user data rate will be uh, 10 gigahertz to 100 giga, giga, uh, big gigabits per second level. Uh, that is we really needed for uh, the Apple uh, XR uh, glass type of uh, device uh, for uh, to be massively adopted at the, at the iPhone level. Uh, so we can imagine probably in three, five years, smartphone will disappear. Uh, the glass is the, is the future. Uh, then to summarize with the connectivity technology about 6G, my mall. Uh, in that in that case, we can put everything together like uh, the classical MIMO that is basically uh, 4G, and then massive MIMO uh, because the uh, the classical MIMO, uh, 4G MIMO uh, that everybody in the phone for everybody for uh, that this nine modes is not able to scale uh, to the upper uh, higher bands. So in 5G. Uh, we designed and implemented a massive MIMO uh, uh, for about uh, 2.6 gigahertz and below 5 gigahertz. And now it's in the commercial uh, 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 deployment. And then for 5G, uh, there's a deployment for 26 gigahertz millimeter wave bands and above. Uh, so these are the uh, hybrid beam forming type of a MIMO. Uh, so the, uh, it's a stay in the 5G range. Uh, and then uh, there is a gap. The gap is the millimeter wave uh, band uh, that from uh, five gigahertz to uh, let's say 15 gigahertz. So mostly it's a six gigahertz to 16, uh, seven, 15 gigahertz. This is a so-called centimeter uh, uh, wave uh, MIMO that is uh, that is of uh, primary engine for uh, 6G uh, network uh, technology, uh, and then uh, the upper to uh, 100 uh, gigahertz to some uh, sub terahertz, let's say two, 220. Those are the terahertz uh, uh, research that uh, 6G is uh, uh, concentrated, and it is excellent. Uh, uh, a frequency band on the device side, not necessarily uh, for connectivity. Uh, so it is light on connectivity, but it will be bigger on the sensing, uh, lot will, which will enable a lot of use on the device side. So in the millimeter wave and below, those bands will be heavily for the connectivity 
but uh, light use for the sensing. There will be a sensing uh, different uh, property. Uh, so you can see in the, in the boots uh, of the exhibition of this conference, we have uh, 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 shown some of our early results on the sensing in terms of industrial robots or, or the uh, hospital application uh, for uh, terahertz or sub, sub terahertz range. Um, the second area uh, of this talk about 6G is integrated sensing and the communication. Uh, so uh, the street will use uh, the sensing will be uh, to, uh, like the sensing assisted communication and they will have a more detailed information of the, uh, for the communication channel is, a, is actually very advanced side channel information uh, to optimize the connectivity. Uh, but then uh, important thing for 6G is the network sensing. It's not the classical uh, sensing for a single like a radar type of a sensing. It is collaborative sensing that means all the device, all the base station will act together uh, to perform uh, jo sensing jointly. Uh, and then in that case, uh, there are bilateral, uh, bidirectional sensing or, uh, uh, or it will be a, a sensing before communication or sensing while the communication. These are can, uh, uh, many flexibility is uh, a lot to trade off the sensing and the communication uh, capability in 6G network. So what uh, we want to emphasize here is that the 6G sensing uh, is integrated in, uh, within the communication. So that means almost sensing by free, that we use the same spectrum, same device, same network, uh, same chip, without additional uh, investment. So that is uh, naturally in building in, in 6G uh, to uh, get uh, a lot of, uh, uh, to enable a lot of data-driven uh, service. Uh, the, in, uh, as I mentioned, when we go higher frequency or even sub-terahertz, the image-like service, uh, sensing-like service basically is a, uh, is a is a uh, is a very useful to as an interface from digital world to physical world. So the in this case like, like 6G, uh, uh, we in addition to transmit the bits, we further explore extract the waveform, uh, which we don't do before to perform the signal processing and then de detect the parameter of the uh, building as uh, Andrea's talking about, you know, the location thing. And furthermore, there are many other things like a trajectory, uh, construct the object uh, or image in, of the real environment. Uh, and this will be um, f uh, further extended with the, uh, uh, with the AI capability. So, in typical case, 6G integrated sensing and communication uh, at a higher band, for example, centimeter or millimeter wave level, uh, with uh, this uh, typical so-called uh, point cloud. So we can use the point cloud data from the radio and apply signal processing and use the neural network uh, to represent or reconstruct the 3D model uh, this is uh, something like uh, 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 radio uh, rendering uh, type of uh, uh, technology. Uh, basically, you get a digital twin of uh, every physical world. So this is a foundational capability uh, in terms of uh, in 6G. And uh, this, this is a network uh, side sensing and communication it will happen with, us, uh, with the same uh, 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 same thing when they can uh, fuse everything to, together. Um, uh, things like a Google Map will be obsolete and with a more uh, real-time uh, uh, physical model in the, in the network that, uh, that can be uh, used for uh, deliver different service. Uh, the 
uh, again, this will be to be, uh, and then uh, we can talk about uh, the uh, uh, ISEC, Integrated Sensing and Communication, and the terahertz. Uh, so this is a, in the, in the terahertz uh, case, this will be act like a terahertz antenna. Uh, oh, camera, sorry. So the 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 future six device, uh, if they equip with this technology, so they will have a camera with a at a terahertz to uh, to create a, a, a different imaging uh, capability. In the in the scenario, like uh, uh, as I show in the uh, factory uh, cases. Uh, and then in the complementary, we can also use the same uh, uh, interface, same waveform, uh, same technology, but uh, using the optical bands uh, to do the uh, optical uh, wireless uh, sensing and uh, integrated sensing and the capability. So in that case, the make combination of these two, some of factory friendly, some are hospital friendly, so we can handle uh, probably most of uh, e environment uh, application scenarios where we can do. And as well, uh, we have a communication capability, so all the uh, D2D uh, and to the, uh, to the network connectivity uh, with all these sensing uh, uh, construction uh, are feasible here uh, in the uh, in the uh, in that case, okay. So this is one of the example uh, how to integrate in, uh, everything in the uh, uh, in the factory to be uh, cases, and it will be it can be applied uh, for most of a uh, uh, to be scenario. Um, one thing I would like to mention is. Uh, the consumer robot is will emerge in the uh, 6G time frame. So in that case, it will be a generic robot hardware, or it's a universal robot. And then you put any app on the robot that will perform different tasks or do different work for you, provide different service for you. However, the robot uh, uh, in that case uh, will embed a few or many uh, 6G uh, device chip, and that chip is integrated sensing and communication. So that capability with backend AI uh, computing, uh, because with the sensing uh, data, we can use the AI model to infer the behavior of the robot. So this, there will be a many advantage to do this. Uh, this is, will be actually breakthrough because we can unify the, all the different sensors of uh, current robots, uh, for example, different physical property sensors, pressure, uh, you know, movement, and all this with a unified sensor uh, with, by 6G radio. And the second, uh, because of a learning algorithm, uh, they can model uh, all the behavior uh, use uh, the AI model. Uh, this model can be done precisely at the, uh, as, a, at, the, at the AI people do today. So you have a remote uh, people to remote uh, control and manipulate uh, the robot. This is called co-pilot. So this is the, during the training period, uh, this will be every movement decision will be as a supervised learning. So you have to learn the model uh, of the training field uh, uh, with the human training the robots to do a few things. And then it learn in the, in, the, uh, in the neural network model. And then eventually you can use this model without human intervene. They can automatically uh, deliver the service. So this will be, a, eventually will be the app uh, model for 6G uh, for the uh, consumer robot, and that can be done for 24 hours and seven days, any type of work, as long as you need. And this robot can be uh, not your own, and you can uh, share 
and it can be, uh, you know, as a service come to your door, or you can keep it as your personal assistant or butler. So those are the uh, one example uh, that 6G will much more uh, uh, in terms of expanding the service into uh, to see uh, area. So two uh, key uh, new thing will show up. One is the uh, the glass will replace the phone. Second, the consumer robots will be uh, with you in that time. So and then there will, everything is on the 6G network and uh, uh, to to support this service. Now I will s switch the gear. Uh, talk about AI, uh, the native AI uh, for 6G. That means 6G is built uh, uh, with day one by AI. So this is a most impactful, uh, a revolutionary way uh, for uh, the 6G. Uh, so in the first thing we can do is this, this so-called post-channel communication area uh, uh, in terms of uh, machine learning uh, as a foundation for the uh, communication, and this is, uh, actually will communicate so-called intelligence uh, and not necessarily the, uh, the information bits. Uh, and then they will be uh, much more efficient, for example, people-to-people -people talking. And then uh, for each individual, uh, we can use deep learning to model the so-called system one, that's the human-to-human -human communication in the in the uh, psychological uh, 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 domain we call system one. Uh, that is, can be very well, fortunately, can be very well captured by uh, a GPT model. And then we don't, in that case, we don't need to talk to, as long as we have the GTV model as a digital twin to the, the other party you want to talk, you have that model, you talk, interact with the model, you can understand most of the knowledge or the question from this person without using the communication channel. And then if there is a system two uh, uh, activity or behavior, uh, you need a communication, you trigger the communication uh, channel as we use the network. So in this way, it will be dramatically reduce the bandwidth required uh, to enable uh, the uh, communication basically for channel, every bit is a new information for the chat GPT model. All the previous knowledge are stored in the, in the model already. So you don't need to additional uh, redundant transmission to, to the a priori knowledge. So this is a very interesting uh, new model uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, 6G can be enabled. And then uh, for the machine-to-machine uh, -machine, uh, uh, communication, if we apply a neural network to perform this task, uh, in 5G, because what we can do is ship the bits, then we probably need a very high bandwidth to uh, transmit all the sensory data to the cloud and then do the AI processing. But then if in 6G that we can embed uh, uh, the AI model in the device side and then use the concept of uh, things like a pre-generated uh, transformer model, it uh, will be uh, uh, easily expected about a thousand times more bandwidth reduction uh, to do this because you will extract what precise intent or meaning that you want to transfer uh, rather than just the every, uh, every bit of the uh, from the sensory. Uh, so in this case, um, for example, uh, a, let's say in the chart GPP context, uh, the, we bor let's say borrow this uh, framework, we can see the machine uh, GTP uh, for the effective communication uh, that uh, 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 that award, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a channel time, uh, uh, Viva was created. Uh, in that case, uh, so we have a, a mod AI model at the device side, and to recognize all the objects, and then we that object with the in the in the we do the embedding, and then after embedding, 
this will basically be described by a graph type of uh, uh, semantics, very condensed and simplified uh, 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 context for transmission. And at the, at the cloud side, you receive that uh, embedding and then do the uh, so-called attention and then use the GPT model to infer, uh, get the answer. And then in meanwhile, uh, there will be uh, some reinforced learning going on uh, to carry the, uh, to, to build the, continue to build the reward model and the policy model to do the similar thing as a training. Uh, because the, uh, at the moment, the, the, uh, the pre-transformer, um, uh, pre-generated uh, transformer model is a hugely computing intensive, so that's the uh, better architecture uh, to uh, split uh, how we perform this machine uh, GPT model for in the 6G setup. Uh, I will later on finish the talking about uh, how a network can help or can improve the, uh, in this case, with the uh, sustainability. Uh, so uh, in, the, in, the, in this scenario, uh, very simple one we talk about, so-called machine uh, to machine uh, uh, GPT. And then we have a simple uh, neural network on the device side that is, uh, uh, if people know in that, in that case, we call so-called YOLO. Uh, that you to tr try to, in this case, to uh, uh, retrieve the traffic light, assign the person, the car, the dog, and all this. And then as long as uh, to put them into uh, a graph type of uh, uh, semantics, and then you do the goal-oriented semantics uh, signal processing to do filtering, you remove all the privacy and all the unrelevant uh, for, this, for this type of uh, uh, purpose-driven communication, and then uh, you send the embedding uh, to the uh, to the network side. And as, as I mentioned, we can then reuse the uh, child GTP technology to do attention and then to do the inference and the generative uh, scenarios and make uh, any decision and then use URLC type of thing to control the machine execution on the other end. Now, uh, in terms of a 6G network architecture, the not, uh, from my point of view, the top one re-architect the work is to embed whole uh, machine learning uh, or AI into the network architecture so that the, especially the learning process uh, will be distributed around the network. Uh, there are three funda fundamental reasons we need to do this. First of all, privacy that all the data today will, uh, in terms to build the AI model, you need to uh, give the data to the OTT data center to build the model. So because of uh, data privacy, uh, we don't want to share the data, but we can share the model. Uh, because from the information theoretical point of view, there is a bottleneck, uh, information bottleneck in the model that you cannot reverse uh, the data from the model. So the privacy will be, model will keep the uh, intelligence, but the privacy will be removed. So this is the number one reason that in terms of network communication, eventually uh, we can imagine not the data packet, but the model. Uh, we, we, we transfer model, we, we exchange the model, uh, not the raw data anymore. So the second is, uh, because uh, of uh, uh, child GTP type of thing. Uh, that pre-generated model need to do human alignment, that human should be in the loop, and this powerful model cannot be generated by a single person or single organization since we cannot completely trust them uh, to do the, uh, to uh, always f uh, comply the human value. So every training, uh, in that case, in the ideal case, should be in the peer review. That means it should be in the network, and different people, different organization uh, will be in the loop uh, to, put, to iterate the model. So this is uh, uh, another second reason that uh, uh, 
distributed mo uh, network model will be very important for 6G. That is the opportunity. And the last one is uh, uh, the uh, sustainability. Uh, I, I will show some results later on uh, that uh, actually distributed the training is more uh, green and sustainable uh, than the uh, uh, data center uh, training model. Uh, so I, I would like to give you uh, like two uh, simple example. One, this is uh, the, uh, the training side, uh, and this is uh, uh, the result that uh, uh, pre uh, chart GTP time that the last year we, uh, we collected. Uh, so GPT-5, you can see, uh, GTP-3, you can see it's on the top of uh, uh, the right-hand side. However, there will be typical model everybody play is the, uh, 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 the, the VGG model uh, 16. So we have 16 layers. And then the, the six uh, red uh, dot uh, means that we partition the model in 16 ways that uh, 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 layer one, layer two, uh, uh, one layer, two layer, layer in the device, or three layer in the device, and then, then the rest layer is in the network. So we do this type of a training. So in that case, uh, the horizontal is the latency. Uh, the smaller latency is the better. The vertical is the uh, 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 energy efficiency. The higher is better. So. Uh, the model completely in the network training is the uh, this uh, like a bluish one on the in the center, but as long as we split the model, so it will be lower latency and higher efficiency. There are at least three partition for this for the very classical VGG 16 layer uh, of uh, the convolutional neural network, and then if we see. Uh, let's say the, the simple uh, uh, swing uh, transformer model, we can uh, as well to uh, put on the different stage of a transformer in this device or in the network to do different training. Uh, so as we can find out that uh, the blue uh, dot one, that's the everything in the cloud. And then there are several uh, transformer model are good, several are bad. Uh, for example, in terms of latency, we can reduce the half of the latency, and then spectrum, uh, uh, the, the energy efficiency either keep the same or, uh, or two times higher. Um, for the inference uh, of the, uh, the uh, larger model, uh, in this case, uh, again, the horizontal is the carbon emission uh, uh, equivalent uh, uh, carbon uh, in terms of uh, emission in terms of a kilo, uh, kilogram, and the vertical is uh, the communication side. So this this is a very interesting result: is the trading before the between the communication carbon emission and the computing uh, carbon emission uh, in terms of a large uh, the big model. Uh, uh, so in that case. Uh, we, ha we have a typical scene uh, two to uh, three to five uh, to six times uh, better uh, in terms of uh, uh, distributed model or the model concentrated in the data center. Uh, so there's an interesting trade-off, uh, slightly increase the network throughput, uh, but it will be dramatically reduce the, uh, uh, the model large model training. Um, then last, uh, before I, I run too much, uh, run out too much of time is the conclusion of the uh, 6G timing. So 2025, uh, we will have 3GPP study on uh, 6G and then to, uh, up to 2020, to 2029, we'll have a, a early specification of a 6G, and then 2030, we'll see the commercialization of a 6G. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tong. Um, do we have uh, questions from the audience? 
there seems to be a very eager person. So please, take this microphone over there and ask. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm from Talisari Space. My name is uh, Mohammed uh, Shafari. And uh, thanks a lot uh, for sharing your vision. And uh, I always find your presentation very uh, inspiring, actually. Uh, I have a question regarding the spectrum. It is mentioned on one of the slides that uh, the spectrum between uh, 7 giga and 15 giga would be needed to achieve the one tera uh, bit per second goal. Uh, th actually, the, the same band is also uh, uh, discussed early this week in uh, European Spectral Management Conference in Brussels. Um, then, uh, actually, but this, uh, this frequency band is being in use by satellite communication today. Uh, it is actually corresponding to uh, Q band. And my question, the, uh, what is the, the goal? What is the intention? Are we going to reallocate this band for IMT terrestrial network, and why we, we, we cannot consider also as alternative the upper six gigahertz bands, you know, between uh, uh, six giga and seven giga that is, uh, can be also actually as an alternative. Th thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, the, what I'm talking is a technology study. And then in terms of uh, uh, spectrum allocation and uh, uh, regulatory requirement, uh, yes, uh, upper six, six uh, gigabits is uh, good for, uh, for 6G implementation. But then if it is reached to one terabit or not, then that's, uh, that's uh, need a uh, summer evaluation. OK. But for the. 12 gigahertz to uh, 13 gigahertz or 10 gigahertz band, those are the consecutive uh, half gigahertz uh, spectrum are available uh, for multi-operator, this is number one. And then of course there's a, a satellite coexistent issue. Um, but the scenario is slightly different now. Uh, if you consider there are, I, I actually show about 4,000 antenna elements is possible in the base station. So in that case, you have a lot of a degree of freedom to do uh, the knowing in terms of uh, direction of a satellite. So the algorithm itself uh, could allow the coexistence uh, between the satellite and the, tourist, the new terrestrial. So this is a topic uh, worthwhile to further look at. At the, at, the, at the lower band, because you have only a couple of antenna, this, this are the, there, it's very difficult sometimes to coexist with satellite. OK. Um, I believe we are out of time, but if there is one more question, we could take that one. Go on. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> my name is Tonarp from Tino. You showed uh, pictures about AI being distributed, UE, network, cloud, everywhere. If this is in one application, it means that it has an impact on the kind of data that you need to transport from A to B. But you also, I believe, indicated that it needs to be distributed over multiple different actors, different uh, companies. What does that have an impact on standardization? Do we need to standardize AI models or? Um, yeah, in if the net AI model will be uh, proprietary in the data center, uh, no standardization probably needed uh, because they can manage the version of a model uh, by individual company as their software release. But then if the model is jointly created in the network, uh, I can imagine there will be some format of the model has to be standardized in terms of version, uh, the model size, and perhaps even the communication model, uh, you know, model type of, uh, as, a, as a packet for, per se, that, uh, that type of uh, information. So that everybody knows uh, how 
can I contribute my data to this model? Or how can uh, use this model to further infer my data? Uh, so that type of thing. Uh, th this, this is uh, the next level of uh, detail. Uh, may maybe need the exam. Okay, thanks. Okay. Once more, thank you, and uh, the, here's a token of our appreciation. Thank you, thank you very much. You. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have now a coffee break until 11. Then we will start one more panel on opportunities and challenges in 6G research. And after that, we have our closing session for the conference. So be back at 11. Thank you very much.